a misty, foggy, beautiful day. gardening with Bernadette. So today we wanted to talk about intent. I wanted to start off this day with or sh uh, this video by showing you just how beautiful the day is. Um, it's actually kind of foggy. The birds are out and it's absolutely uh, lovely. So I wanted to get in a bit about what magical intention is and what you can do to make this work for you and how to put that intention into your own gardens, okay? So, we'll start off with the beginnings, alrighty? When you're planting your gardens, alrighty? And as you can see, most of what I have here, those are milk cartons, and I have all of these different containers all around, um, even milk containers. You can see I have things planted in here. That's my sunflowers. Um, many different things here that we can work on, right? What the intention is on that is recycling. Okay? When you recycle, you honor the earth. You try to use everything that you have possible in order to make something tangible out of that. And that means growth. Growth of your plants, growth of intention. I have lots and lots and lots of different things uh, that have different uh, sorts of intention. So, number one, I want to start this off with by thanking you all for all of your uh, comments and uh, ideas as far as where this channel will go. And I will ask for that every time uh, that I do this. So, what that means is what intention means to you. I'd love to know what plants you're growing for a specific intention and then take it from there. So, we could start off with protection. Is that the intention? Is it for abundance? Is that the intention? Is it for love? Is that the intention? Um, is it for, for honoring the spirits of the land? Is that your intention? So if you get the idea of what that intention means and where we're going to go from that, alrighty? So, um, um, let's see, um, we have lots and lots and lots and lots of so my way is not just the only way, but we will take it into uh, different directions based on comments, based on ideas that may uh, come up uh, with me. The one thing that I would start this off with is when you plant something, right? I have everything kind of, um, as you can see, all staked up. Um, I have marigolds here. Um, I have tomatoes here. Basil down here. Everyone here has an intention, alrighty? So basil is associated with uh, abundance and monies. Sunflowers are associated with uh, money as well. Um, tomato, again, abundance, but um, tomato actually is associated with love as well. Um, we'll talk about some botany as well because I, I do take classes in that, and there are many of my friends that are also herbalists. Really, really delve into this. So there's lots going on. My, my cucumbers are beginning to come in. Um, uh, that's a very cooling, um, healthy aspect, and uh, we'll be going into uh, all of those different things. It's endless here as to where this can go. And then I'm figuring when it's final harvest time, which is usually around October, um, we start to go inside, and we'll talk about tincturing. Uh, drawing, how to use the plants that you harvested and how to use it um, in the fall and winter time and then 
come the spring, we start up again. So we'll start off with just like I said at the very beginning, and that's planting. So it sounds odd to talk about planting right now, but believe it or not, this is mid-season, which means your uh, spring crops are, are probably done or almost done, and you can start planting for those cooler crops that will last until um, the first frost or just after. Carrots can actually take a couple of frosts and, and stuff, but usually those are like root vegetables and, and stuff. So you can actually start a whole bunch of those now. Now, what do I mean by starting? You can either buy uh, transplants from your, gar uh, from your local garden center, um, and that is great and that is fine. Um, we don't know if those are organic or not, so uh, I want you to keep that in mind, but sometimes if you don't have a greenhouse or you don't have the space inside, um, you could do that. I like to start from seeds. I have many seeds. I'm going to say that 90% of what you see in my container garden and in my in-ground garden was started uh, by seed. I have a grow light inside and I have a couple of um, arrow gardens inside and even that light, like I had the way that I have it all set up, I can plant my little seedlings um, inside and when they sprout, I can bring them out. And usually when I do that, I bring them out to the greenhouse to harden them off a little bit. Now it's so warm that I can most likely start outside, except that if it's cool weather crop, they don't like it that hot. And that's, we're talking about seedlings. So I may have to start certain crops inside as well, start them and then put them in the ground. Why go through all of that? Well, if anybody works with intention and works with uh, magic, the point is, is that you're part of each step, and as a result, your prayers and your relationship with the spirit of that plant then is fostered, or fostered, uh, um, I guess I need more caffeine today. But from beginning to end, you establish that relationship with that plant, and, and that's actually quite important if you're growing with intent. So um, there, I'm going to show you something. So this, believe it or not, is an African marigold. It hasn't come to see, I mean, excuse me, hasn't blossomed yet. But I actually grew this from seed, alrighty. So I, I, I bought the package of seed, but I know that this year I'm going to try my best at seed saving. This is going to be fairly new to me with something like this because the seeds are so tiny. Uh, with marigolds, but to me, um, the spirit of this plant is pretty amazing, and I can feel it, and um, the marigolds are kind of like, I don't know, I, I, I think, now it's associated with the sun, alrighty, uh, a marigold is considered an aster plant, and aster are sunflowers, and um, and such like that, and we'll go into the botany behind this, so uh, the asters are usually the guardians of and what I say when I say that is because of the size, the size of the flowers, the size of the buds, um, the stems are actually quite thick. I don't know if you can see this, but the stem is actually quite thick. Alrighty, and I have sunflowers behind me, but we'll take it from there. Um, and so they're strong, hardy plants, uh, and they bring in the bees and the pollinators. So to me, because they do that, um, they set up an ecosystem um, here within my container garden. You know what I mean? And it looks like a forest and it feels like a forest. And sometimes it's a little hard to get through depending on the, the plants that I have here. My, I'm looking at my cucumber plants right here. Let's see if you can see this. These are my cucumber plants. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. So I have a little baby cucumber coming in there. But as much as the cucumbers have their own beautiful flowers and everything, it's plants like the marigolds and the borage that you may have seen uh, yesterday and the, the uh, flowers that I have that bring in the pollinators and draws them in. So it's like the, that family of plants actually starts it all off because we need the pollinators and so we need the uh, family of plants that uh, will 
will bring them in. So, and to me, it's pretty exciting. So that is my intention. So my intention with this plant is, is one of fostering health, fostering um, a relationship between the two of us. I am looking for those buds, one of the other uh, miracles has started to bud, um, and asking it to do its job, and as a result, my job is to keep it um, healthy, and there's a butterfly going on around here, um, and that's the beginning of that intention. So, this plant is going to be quite large. I did not know that miracles get to be so tall, but growing next to it, uh, again, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it, probably not. Um, I was actually complaining to my husband that I could not find a uh, mullein around here because I live at a retreat center, as you can tell. That's actually a storm came out behind me. And the landscapers that are hired mow everything down here, all right? Not in the far woods, because if you go to the back of the mountain, it's, it's, it's all mountainous and there's plenty of plants up there. But um, I have limitations as far as uh, walking because I have very bad knees. So as a result, I like to have something fairly close when I'm doing foraging, and they keep mowing down uh, the mullein. I would especially like second-year mullein uh, because they get the flowers out of that, and we'll get into all of that other stuff. But guess what? This year, first time ever, because I set that intention that I wanted mullein, I must have five or six mullein plants growing in various pots. I'm not going to pull them out. I am not going to pull them out. So even if I don't have second year uh, growth because I want the flowers, the leaves themselves are still very good and very healthy. So when it's time to harvest them, I'll pull them up, dry them, and either tincture it or uh, dry them and, and have it when I want to uh, uh, tincture it. So that's the power of intention. I put that out, did not know, guess what? The Spirit's uh, gifted me with a whole bunch of different uh, molds all around I said you can't really see here, but I have mullins in my nasturtium plants over here. I have it in my carrot uh, spot over here, and where my other sunflowers and um, strawberries, a bunch of mullin came up. So it, it, it's kind of funny that that happened, and plantain always comes up every year, but um, I use a plantain to actually feed uh, my guinea pig. So that's the start. So I wanted to give you just a, a quickie idea as to what intention means. And um, either this afternoon or tomorrow, I'll, I'll start with a particular plant and show you how I fostered that um, relationship with it. Like I said, I mentioned this magnificent uh, marigold, but there are obviously much, much more. Alrighty, so I will speak to you all later and many blessings and take care of one another. Bye-bye.